Hello, I'm Melissa Pinanen. I'm a professor of otolaryngology at the University of Michigan, and I am here at the American College of Physicians meeting in Philadelphia, speaking about common ENT conditions for the internist. I discussed the American Academy of Otolaryngology clinical practice guideline for evaluation of neck mass in adults. Um, that guideline is important because it makes the point that very commonly patients who have a neck mass may have metastatic cancer despite no other symptoms. The guideline states that if patients have a neck mass present for two weeks or more without signs of infection, that patient is at increased risk for cancer. Further, that guideline states that if the neck mass itself is larger than 1.5 centimeters, if it's firm, if it's fixed to adjacent tissues and immobile, or if there's ulceration of overlying skin, that neck mass may be a malignant lesion. Patients who have a neck mass that may be malignant should be evaluated by a head and neck cancer provider who can inspect the oral pharynx, larynx, hypopharynx, and nasopharynx to look for a primary cancer. I also discussed the American Academy of Otolaryngology Clinical Practice Guideline for dysphonia. Dysphonia, or hoarseness, is common. Most of the time it's caused by a virus and it goes away in a couple weeks. But it's not always so self-limited. And this clinical practice guideline describes appropriate evaluation and treatment of patients with dysphonia. Some patients with dysphonia merit um, expedited or urgent evaluation to a specialist for laryngoscopy. Those include patients who may have had a recent injury to the um, recurrent laryngeal nerve or the larynx, such as patients who've had cardiac surgery, carotid endarterectomy, um, anterior cervical spine fusion, or thyroidectomy. Um, likewise, patients who um, are professional voice users um, merit um, urgent evaluation because their voice um, is important to their ability to make a living as well as their um, emotional health. Patients with dysphonia who have strider, respiratory distress, trouble breathing, walking up a flight of stairs, or noisy breathing, or who have a cough and are expectorating mucus and crusts, those patients with dysphonia also warrant urgent referral to a specialist for laryngoscopy. Other patients with dysphonia who don't have those histories may be referred to a specialist for laryngoscopy at any time, and if the hoarseness persists beyond a month, those patients should be referred for, for um, evaluation. Um, this is important not only to improve patients' quality of life, but dysphonia may be the only symptom of a more serious underlying disease. Finally, I talked about epistaxis. Epistaxis is a common problem. Patients hate it, it's messy, and it's frightening to them. Um, fortunately, most nosebleeds are not worrisome, um, and most nosebleeds can be managed um, by patients at home without needing to go to the emergency department. Um, after a patient can manage a nosebleed at home, then you and your patient can decide whether or not they need to make an appointment and follow up to see you or to see a specialist. Optimal treatment for epistaxis is a topical decongestant spray, um, something like oxymetazoline or phenylephrine. Um, and that's because 90% of nosebleeds come from the front of the nose, the very anterior part of the nose that you can reach with your fingertip. So I teach patients to spray a topical decongestant spray in their nose and to pinch their nose. Importantly, most patients don't know how to pinch their nose. Most patients incorrectly will hold their nose here over the nasal bones, but the source of bleeding is down here at the very um, anterior part of the septum. So holding pressure to compress the soft part of a nose is more effective. Thank you.